Let's go to this uh, clip from Donald Trump when he was speaking in Pennsylvania earlier about the founding fathers. Our founding fathers understood trade much better than our current politicians, believe me. George Washington said that the promotion of domestic manufacturing will be among the first consequences to flow from an energetic government. Alexander Hamilton spoke frequently of the expediency of encouraging manufacturing in, in, in the United States. And listen to this. The first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, warned that, quote, the abandonment of the protective policy by the American government will produce want and ruin among our people. He understood it much better than our current politicians. That's why he was Abraham Lincoln, I guess. Our original Constitution did not even have an income tax. Instead, it had tariffs emphasizing taxation of foreign, not domestic, production. Yet today, 240 years after the revolution, we've turned things completely upside down. We tax and regulate and restrict our companies to death. And then we allow foreign countries that cheat to export their goods to us tax-free. How stupid is this? How can it happen? How stupid is this? As a result, we have become more dependent on foreign countries than ever before. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to declare our economic independence once again. That means... That means voting for Donald Trump. I'll do it. No doubt about it, not even a little doubt. It also means reversing two of the worst legacies of the Clinton years. America has lost nearly one-third of its manufacturing jobs since 1997. Even as the country has increased its population, think of this, by 50 million people. At the center of this catastrophe are two trade deals pushed by Bill and Hillary Clinton. First, the North American Free Trade Agreement, or the disaster called NAFTA. Second, China's entry into the World Trade Organization. NAFTA was the worst trade deal in the history. It's like the history of this country. And Hillary Clinton, who backed that terrible, terrible agreement. Then, as Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton stood by idly while China cheated on its currency, added another trillion dollars to our trade deficits, and stole hundreds of billions of dollars in our intellectual property. And I've been talking about China for many years. And you know what? Nobody listened. But they're listening now. That I can tell you. All right. Now, these are remarks that were made by Donald Trump earlier this uh, this last week in uh, Pennsylvania. And he's absolutely right when he talks about the loss of manufacturing being the loss of our economy. Understand what's happened with this. We've been told, and I've heard this repeated by people like Gary Johnson <laughs> doubling down, saying, oh, it's a good thing when you get rid of manufacturing. This is what we were all told 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Donald Trump didn't buy it then. You had Ross Perot didn't buy it then either about NAFTA. They were fighting this battle for a long time. Donald Trump has one of the best advisors now for American sovereignty, and that is uh, Senator Sessions on his team. But look, what it, what's happened to us? We've had a manufacturing economy, which used to produce wealth. 
That has been moved offshore. And we're told, don't worry about it. They're making cheap stuff for you. Just enjoy the cheap stuff that's coming in. And enjoy your nice, clean service jobs. How's that service economy working out for you? Well, see, even the service economy is disappearing, isn't it? It's going down into a gig economy. You know, like working for Uber. And Gary Johnson, when he's, we got a report up today on Infowars.com where he says, Trump is a racist. No, that's that's uh, original, isn't it? I guess that'll really get you a lot of traction, won't it, uh, Gary? You know, Gary Johnson is nothing but a stalking horse for Hillary Clinton. And the Libertarian Party, I'm ashamed to say that I ever had anything to do with it. It was decades ago that I was involved in it. But they now they have become basically uh, a bunch of welfare whores just trying to get money out of the federal government. They hope that if they get more than 5%, they can get massive funds for their little political party uh, and get on the welfare bandwagon for their political party. That's what the Libertarian Party has turned into. And that's what they want to turn America into. Because you go from manufacturing to a service economy to the gig economy like Uber. Gary Johnson said, oh, Uber's great. We need to have Uber everything. Oh, really? Really? Because what happens when you get into this part-time service economy now that we're struggling with? The next thing that happens is people like Uber say, you're going away. We're going to replace you with robots, with automation, and you've got no job. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give you a handout, a universal basic income. And we've now got people like Charles Murray, who documented back in the 1980s the problems of dependency based on welfare, now advocating it with the Koch brothers, with all of these libertarian think tanks saying, this is the way we control the precariat, the people whose jobs we have gradually eviscerated in this economy. We make them completely dependent with a universal basic income.